in different directions and things just don't fit well. So let's settle ourselves and prepare ourselves on this first Sunday of Advent in worship to God. There's some changes in the service that's different from what is printed, and it, it should make a difference to most of us. The organist is, may make a little difference. So we'll start with the first part of the service, the word, the um, credo, where I am now, the lighting of the Advent candle, and then we'll have the um, opening, opening hymn. Would follow along Psalm 33 and then in the procession. Psalm 33 is part of the um, lighting of the candle. <clears throat> well, we're going to sing. We're going to sing the procession after it says, "We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield." That is part of the lighting of the Advent candle. Okay, very good. By the way, everybody's going to be singing except for the prelude and the communion. But everyone is going to ask about the prayer of the hymn. The hymns are on the hymn board. So I'll give you an introduction in We are going to be singing the Trisadion today. And the Trisadion is going to be after the Collect of Purity. I mean, after the, after the procession, I Today, we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. Today, we light the candle of hope. Please read with me. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, 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 give us the courage to hope. Give us grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope. Amen. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield.
church here at St. Peter's once again this blessed first Sunday of Advent. Let us worship together. Blessed be the one holy and living God. For glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Say with me the collect for purity. Almighty oh, God, you will offer our sorrow, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy men and God in your holy name, through your Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. 
Remember the liberty according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches us in his righteous way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The second reading is 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Happy Advent, everyone. Happy Advent. Now, you know, we're, all, we're very uh, blessed, you know, because we're part of what is known as the liturgical traditions. And we have just turned into a new liturgical season, Advent, and also now we're in a brand new liturgical year, church year. And you know, not every denomination does liturgy or liturgical seasons. When I was in the military, the, the liturgicals were the Episcopalians, <laughs> the Catholics, the Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox, and uh, depending on the Lutheran denomination, the Lutherans. So, happy Advent, fellow liturgicals. <laughs> and notice too, we have a new color. And, and Eleanor's really styled in with her liturgy of, of Advent going on there. <laughs> anyway, so you may be wondering, you know, especially if you've been an Episcopalian your whole life or one of the liturgicals, what does Advent really mean? Does anyone know? Coming. Coming, yes. And it means to prepare. Yes, to prepare. So yes, you guys know. Um, and uh, these next four weeks are the season of Advent. And so Advent is a very short season, only four weeks. And one of the beauties of the season of Advent is that each week tends to have a different spiritual message. Each week being hope, peace, joy, and love. And as we saw with the lighting of the Advent wreath, we have the prayers for hope today. One of the most beautiful of Advent traditions is the Advent wreath. Um, there are many traditions in Advent, as we all know, as we plunge into darkness here and go toward Christmas and winter solstice and the nights get longer and the days get shorter. And for those of us living in the desert, the, the temperatures plunge into the 70s and 80s. <laughs> I know, got to break out the park road, right? <laughs> we have Christmas caroling and, and all kinds of uh, festivities in the next few weeks and um, holiday gatherings and what else? Family gatherings. Yeah, shopping at Picard. Shopping. <laughs> yeah, the madhouse at the mall. <laughs> One of our American Advent traditions. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> you know, in Advent, I, I confess, Advent is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, season. And I, I like to take the time during these four weeks to, amidst the noise and haste, of Advent and shopping and all the other festivities and traffic and everything else is to try to go within a little bit and quiet myself. And if possible, and I know at times it's not possible, but I try, slow down a little bit. Take some extra time for my inner life. And uh, maybe, you know, start the day with morning prayer every day. And if not, Compline. I love Compline at night. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, short and sweet, and it really ends the day with such a nice thing. And I also like to just take the time to meditate and pray on these spiritual themes of hope, peace, joy, and love. And so for this week, the first week of Advent, we have the spiritual message of hope. So, for today and this week, let us contemplate deeply and pray on hope. And after the year, and well, almost two years now, we've all just lived through, we really need to focus on hope, don't we? We've come a long way, haven't we? We've had some good things happen, but we were not out of the woods yet, and we need to be re-reminded, as I like to say, 
of hope. We're human. Intellectually, we know. Yes, yes, hope is a good thing. You know, having hope is wonderful. But we're human. And our emotions, life gets to us, things get busy, we start to worry, things happen, you know how it is. And we need to be re reminded. Focus on hope. Now, it is no coincidence that hope is also one of the main spiritual teachings and concepts in every religion in the world. There's two main things that every religion in the world and spiritual path share. Hope and prayer. Isn't that interesting? So, we all have heard of the story of Pandora's box, right? Remember that story? So what happens to Pandora? She's, she's given this box, right? This, you know, some stories say it's a big box, some say it's one of the little boxes. And she's told to do what with the box? Don't open the box. <laughs> and naturally, what does she do? She opens the box. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, you ever wanted to tell someone to do something? Tell them not to do it, right? <laughs> so she opens the box. And what happens? All these nasty, evil, negative spirits are unleashed into the world. Things like plagues and disease and poverty and war and greed and envy, hatred, mistrust, sorrow, anger, revenge, despair, toil, strife, and so forth. And here we are in the year 2021, and it seems like times haven't changed much, have they? <laughs> Every now and then that box gets opened and all these things are unleashed into the world once again. However, there's one more little spirit that remained in the box. And she was inside the very bottom corner of the box. And she is a tiny, tiny, but oh so powerful spirit. And who was this? The spirit of hope. The spirit of hope stayed behind. And so the Pandora's box story tells us that during the most bleak and horrible and darkest of times, that we look inside our metaphorical box and find that little, powerful, gentle spirit of hope. And she's in there we have to look within for it. Hope is future oriented, isn't it? It always intends like something that's, things are going to get better down the road. Hope is future oriented that we will envision and have a positive outcome, no matter the toughest of times. That we will heal when sick. The light will overcome the darkness. Now, it's easy to think that hope is just, oh, you know, wishful thinking. Reality is reality. I say, turn off the TV <laughs> and focus on hope because it's way more than just wishful thinking. It has been noted that people going through serious illness that have hope have a much higher and improved prognosis for healing from this threatening illness. Hope, when you really think about it, at its essence, is life. Now, um, there's a book called Man's Search for Meaning that was written by Dr. Viktor Frankl, and he was a psychiatrist who lived through the Nazi concentration camps, and he survived. And what they had him do is because he was a doctor, and even though he was Jewish, and one of the inmates there, a 
prisoners, they had to do medical care. And he made an interesting observation. He said, he noticed that people, even as they arrived in the concentration camp, the ones that still had their physical health, because I'm sure you've seen pictures of concentration camp people. They usually look very emaciated and, you know, not good at all. But the ones that still had their physical health, the day they gave up on hope, the day they gave up on that they would never see their family again, that they wouldn't get through this, they were dead within a day or two. Even if they still had their physical health. On the other hand, he also observed those that were just totally starving and emaciated had you know, almost a death store, but those that held on to hope, they were going to make it and one day hopefully see their families again. They survived. Now, isn't that interesting? So without hope, there is no future, no life. And it's easy to fall into despair or become depressed, especially in times like these that we've all endured the past almost two years. You know, beyond the pandemic, it just seems like the world's just gone bonkers, hasn't it? I mean, with, I mean, everything. <laughs> Everything's just like, oh, oh my gosh, the world as we know it seems to have ended in March 2020. But may we remember, hope is in that box, that metaphorical box deep in our psyche, in our soul. She's in here. Look for it. Seek, and you will find. And so for this week of Advent, everyone, I challenge you to focus and pray on hope. May we think about hope in every breath we take. May we think and pray upon hope as we drink our morning coffee, as we go about our daily routines, as we're stuck in lines at the mall <laughs> or a big box store, wherever it is you go. May we think about hope as the last thing we think of before we fall asleep at night. And with hope, we will get through these difficult times. With hope, we will get better. And we will get through this. And this is the gem of this cyclical, annual, liturgical season that we have. This week's message of hope and expectation to remind us of the spiritual strength and wisdom of hope. Cast away the darkness all around us and put on the armor of light. And be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the worries of life. Focus on hope. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Heaven and earth will pass away, as the gospel said. But the words of Jesus will never pass away. Amen. Amen.
Ronnie, Jobeth, Ron, Jeannie, Kara, Sharon, Bertram, Billy, Barbara, Gail, Noodles, Floyd, Katie, Joe, Tom, Marianne, Ray, Kathy, Ethel, Frankie, Alden, Teresa, Suzanne, Fred, Mike, Cooper, Arno, Lou, Cheryl, Joan, Audrey, Lenise, David, Kathy. The anxious and the grieving. Again, I invite you to read your own intercession silently or not. O come, O come, Emmanuel. <coughs> we are hope and our salvation. salvation. God, our hope, keep us blameless before you that we may meet the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with joy. May we and all who have died rest to life immortal, especially Don, Rani, and Jean. May their souls and the souls of our departed rest in peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel. In our hope and our salvation. In our lasting cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Church in Kingman. Source of life, fountain of mercy, all things are possible with you. Grant us a share in your eternal life. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have done done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you all in goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And all of us with you.
Thank you, Reverend Laura, for the gift of hope. And as she said hope, I sat and I thought about how we are hoping and praying that this coming year, and that we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we also await the coming of our vicar. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Advent is waiting, 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 and things will come to. But we do have hope. We all have hope. We live in hope. And we are glad that we are all here. As Reverend Laura, Reverend Laura said, it's Advent and we prepare for Christmas. Each Christmas we decorate the altar with flowers. There are some envelopes in the back. If you would like to contribute to um, what we do, what poinsettias mm -hmm. in the front, please put it in the envelope. If you want it as a memorial or as a Thanksgiving, write that on there and we will put it in the bulletin. So put it in the envelope, get it to the church, and we'll take care of it. We thank you for that. I want to remind you that we do have Sunday, um, Sunday evening. But we nice to have some Sunday evening prayers, wouldn't it? We do have Tuesday evening prayer at 6 o'clock online, Thursday evening complaint at 6 o'clock online, Sunday we meet in person and online at 10 a.m. Mask is still required and social distancing. Reverend Laura was named the Missioner for Veteran Ministry. And since Reverend Laura is one of our own, I really claim her because she was our vicar at one time. We need to do something with her to start this ministry. And we do know that we have veterans in here. And I mentioned Marianne because Marianne is a veteran, she's an administrative assistant, and we will work together to jump start stuff here at St. Peter's. And I hope that once she gives us some more information, we are more than willing to help her push this ministry on. It's a great ministry. It's something that has been set aside for a long time until Reverend Laura got up and, and told the bishop, I see all sorts of ministry, but I don't see this one. So I hope we will put ourselves on the map by being a part of this new ministry. So pray for Reverend Laura and pray that we do what we need to do to make this ministry jump start. And like I said, I already talked to Reverend Laura about Marianne. That Marianne can work with her here. Um, those of you who were in church on last Sunday, I do have an announcement to make. There was no one from this parish that was diagnosed with COVID. So if you are feeling any kind of illness or if you do need to go take a test, be prepared to do that. The person is doing okay, but he or she does have COVID. And that was and that person was in church last Sunday. So let us pray for strength and vigor. Anyone else have any announcement? Can I? I want to remind everybody that we are, the Outreach Committee is hopeful that we will have a good opportunity sale on the 11th of December. If you would bring any items you would like to donate to this sale, all funds will go to Laundry Love and to our various other um, ways we help the people in the community with hygiene kits, through the library, with blankets uh, for the homeless, so anything you would like to donate, Marianne is here and would be able to let you into the office on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays between 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock. If you have larger items, if you could arrange for someone to help you um, bring them here and unload them, that would be wonderful and we're hoping for a good sale. Thank you. Good morning again. Sorry, please. 
hate it too. Uh, um, so I'm Kari, and I've updated some activities. Um, there's a little half sheet flyer on the back table. I've also posted it on the bulletin board back here, and we'll have it in the third Peter next week, just to remind you of some activities that are coming up. I know the uh, Casa Grande Christmas Light Parade is going to be on the fourth, I believe, which is coming up. So, um, also, I am very hopeful that, <laughs> what's our word of the week, I think, um, that we will get lots of responses to hosting coffee hour. We can have coffee hour again. I'm happy to go over the protocols for how that's going to work. I'm the host for the first one, which will be next Sunday, um, so you'll all get to see how it runs. But as long as we have hosts to host coffee hour, we can have it, which is exciting. So, um, but there's a sign-up sheet out here. If you have any questions, please see me. Thanks. This is Laura. Reverend Laura. Could you could you please bless the the uh, prayer shawls that are up there, please? Of course, of course. Look at everyone these beautiful prayer shawls here. Mm -hmm. Please join in with me and say prayers in your mind and send your blessings upon these beautiful prayer shawls and the hands who have made them. And the people who will receive them as they wear them to heal and have comfort. Let us pray. Most holy God, we ask that you send your spirit upon these beautiful shawls, that your presence be felt, your healing presence be felt by those who wear it and receive it. May it bring them much comfort and healing. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. And now, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better grab this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, birthday, birthday, uh huh. And um, <clears throat> do I dare ask how many times around the sun?
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and of our salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us a son with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. And continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face and grant you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. Oh, my God.